This video is sponsored by Australian jazz artist Phil Buckle. Hang around to the end to hear some of his music. A line cliche is where we take a chord, for example, a minor triad, like this A minor chord, and we take then the highest or lowest note of that chord. So in this example, it would either be the A at the bottom or the E at the top. And we then lower or raise that note by a semitone each time. And that gives us our chord progression, our line cliche chord progression. So with this A minor, I'm gonna take the lowest note and lower it a semitone each time to give us our line cliche. And just by moving that note at the bottom down, a semitone at a time, and keeping everything else the same, we get this really satisfying and elegant sounding chord progression, our line cliche chord progression. This is a really intuitive idea to sort of stumble across either at the piano or the guitar, so it's no surprise it's been used in many different songs. In Michelle by the Beatles, on a few occasions we get this line cliche where we start on an F minor chord and then the lowest note of the chord F descends by a semitone each time until we arrive at D flat. A much longer line cliche can be found in Butterflies and Hurricanes by Muse. Here we start on a D minor chord and then the top note of the chord D steps down one semitone at a time all the way down through six different chords in total, ending up with this other voicing of a D minor chord. Usually, line cliches will just go in one direction and then end. For example, when butterflies and hurricanes, the line runs downwards. However, sometimes a line cliche could climb down and then back up again. We can see this, for example, in I Just Called to Say I Love You by Stevie Wonder. Here, the line cliche runs down from E flat minor, E flat minor major seven, E flat minor seven, and then it steps back up the way it came, back to the E flat minor major seven chord, and eventually back to the E flat minor chord where we began. No We can also vary where in the chord the line cliche is being voiced. In Try Some Buy Some by George Harrison, the right hand of the piano is just staying still on a G minor chord. And the left hand, along with the bass, is providing the line cliche by starting on the root note of G and then moving down the semitone at a time to give us that line cliche. Try some by some actually doubles up the line cliche because after this initial line cliche built on G minor, we then go to the four chord C minor and get another line cliche. It seems George Harrison was quite the fan of line cliches. His classic song Something features this line cliche where we start with a C major chord and then the root note of the chord C, which is voiced at the top, descends down in semitones down to the note B, giving us C major seven and then down to the note B flat, giving us the chord C dominant seven. At this point, even though the chromatic line effectively continues with the note A in the F major chord, strictly speaking, a line cliche must be one static chord with a line moving by semitones. And here with the F chord, although the semitone line continues, other notes in the chords also change, ending the line cliche after just these three chords. Into the Great Wide Open by Tom Petty also features a line cliche where the tonic note descends. We start on the tonic chord of E minor, and then the root note goes from the top down one semitone to E minor major seven, then down another semitone to D, giving us E minor seven, and then it goes down to C sharp, giving us E minor six, and then this progression repeats. Eddie waited till he finished high school. He went to Hollywood, got a tattoo. A usually quite unusual chord type that we've actually seen quite a lot in this video so far is the minor major seven chord. So a minor major seven chord is a minor triad, so A minor, for example, but then we add the major seven on top, 
which would be the G sharp. The seventh note taken from the A major scale, the major seven. So an A minor seven would have a G natural, an A minor major seven has a G sharp at the top. And this is the sort of chord that, as you can tell from the way it sounds, doesn't get used that often in songs because it has quite a potent dissonant sound. In fact, the most likely time you'll see this chord is in a line cliche because it can provide a valuable step in our line. So if we were starting with this voicing of an A minor chord with the A on the top, it would then climb down onto G sharp. And that is our A minor major seven chord. It would then likely climb down to A minor seven, regular A minor seven with a G natural at the top. Maybe go down to the six afterwards. So in this context where we're stringing together this line, it suddenly becomes quite a logical choice to have this A minor major seven chord, which would usually be quite an unusual choice of chord. So if you do spot a minor major seven chord in a song, it's quite likely that that song is using a line cliche. Now, we can't talk about line cliches without looking at some old American songbook classics, the sort of old jazz and swing songs that the likes of Frank Sinatra and Ella Fitzgerald would have sung. Line cliches effectively became cliché during this era of music. The show tunes and jazz standards of the 30s, 40s and 50s often featured this chord progression where you get given a static chord and then a voice moves in semitones against it. Another great example is My Funny Valentine, written by Rogerson Hart in 1937. And in 1935, Duke Ellington wrote the tune In a Sentimental Mood, which features two different line cliches back to back. We initially get one built on the tonic chord of D minor, and then this is immediately echoed by another, starting on the subdominant chord, the four chord, G minor. All of the line cliches we've looked at so far in this video have descended. That is to say, they've started somewhere maybe on an E minor chord, and then the note in question will descend. Or maybe the note was descending from the top of the chord, but still descending. But we can have a line cliche where the note ascends instead. And this is quite common if you're building the line cliche off the fifth degree of the chord. So with our E minor chord here, the fifth is B. We can't really have a descending line cliche from the fifth because we'd quickly start colliding with the other notes in the chord. And as you can hear, it just doesn't sound very satisfying. So line cliche is built off of the fifth degree, whether the chord's major or minor. So this is E minor, but from the fifth degree will often rise instead. And this actually is one of the most famous line cliches, the motif from the James Bond films, this iconic chord progression, which starts on E minor, and then the top note, which is B, climbs up to C, then the C climbs up to C sharp, and then climbs back down again to C to continue. So the James Bond line cliche starts with a minor triad, raises the fifth up, and comes back down again. A similar line cliche can be found in one of my favourite songs, Hey Bulldog by the Beatles, where in the chorus we get a B minor chord, and then the top note of that chord, F sharp, rises up one semitone at a time, and then we get that repeated again, this time on the fourth chord of the key, E minor. So it kind of continues that climb 
and we get all of this tension building up. Another really common chord progression that ascends is when we start on a major chord and the top note of the chord, the fifth, climbs up until we reach the seventh. And then it sort of resolves onto the fourth chord of the key. And this is actually a progression I talked about extensively in a video a couple weeks ago. So do check that one out if you didn't catch it. Another thing to bear in mind with line cliches is what to label the chords. Because sometimes we get this simpler shorthand labeling convention with a line cliche to make it more obvious to a performer that a line cliche is happening. So for example, they will just write the chords A minor, and then for the next chord, they'll write A minor slash G sharp. And then they'll write A minor slash G, A minor slash F sharp, A minor slash F. We kind of know what they're talking about. If we read that on a chord chart, we can see, ah, okay, that's, that's a line cliche. I'm gonna keep the A minor where it is and have a descending bass line somewhere in the progression. But these aren't the full names of the chords. And in fact, they're actually slightly inaccurate if we wanted to get pedantic about it because an A minor slash G sharp chord, for example, wouldn't be that, it would be that because it would be an A minor with a G sharp in the bass, in the lowest voice. But that isn't what we were looking for, is it? We can, we can hear that's not quite right. What we, were, what we were looking for is this chord, which is an A minor, but we've swapped the A for G sharp but that's not technically an A minor over G sharp or even an A minor major seven. It's a G sharp augmented chord. So for example, that would be our regular G sharp chord, G sharp augmented. But if we wrote that on a chord chart, the fact that there's a line cliche happening would be sort of obscured. From a performance point of view, they probably prefer this simpler but less accurate description of the chords where we can see quite clearly where the notes are moving in the chord. Now, in a moment, I'm gonna have a go at playing the longest line cliche ever played. But before we do that, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor, who is Australian jazz artist, Phil Buckle. Along with Jimmy Johnson on bass and Virgil Donati on drums, Philip blends jazz, rock and folk to great effect. Have a listen to his track, Custom Made. And, fast. A custom made. and here's a bit of his song, Keep It Up. <music> to find out more about Phil Buckle and his music, follow the links down below. As you may have noticed from the examples in this video, line cliches tend to only go on for about four, five chords in a row, maybe six at a maximum. After that, you sort of run out of notes to continue the line with. So for example, if I was with, uh, starting with A minor, I get a second chord, a third chord, a fourth chord, a fifth chord, this is where they would often stop. You could have a sixth one here. If I got a seventh one in, starts becoming a little less satisfying, a seven, an eighth one even, and then a ninth is just gonna sound pretty horrendous. Tenth is all right. So you could technically keep going, but it just becomes a little less satisfying. Of course, eventually, like I have now, you wind up back where you started. But let me end this video now by trying to perform a piece of music that does make use of this kind of <laughs> perpetually moving line cliche. <laughs> 